Hello, welcome back. We're gonna look at water and its solvent properties in this next video. And what it means for water to be a solvent is that it's able to dissolve materials. So you can take a material like, for instance, we're gonna look at salt today, NaCl, put it into water and it kind of disappears. So you can't really tell the difference between salt water and, and just tap water by just looking at it. The salt has dissolved, right? So I wanna show you first of all what a kind of crystal of salt would look like. So when you poured a bit of salt out of a table, just took it out of a shaker, it would look kind of like this, all bonded together, all connected in kind of again, this crystalline structure. Each particular little salt molecule, so this is sodium chloride with the sodium here and the chlorine here are, are ionically bonded together. So sodium kind of gives or donates an electron to the chlorine and the chlorine is gonna take the electron from the sodium and in this state, they're kind of, we would say they're happy, they follow the octet rule for chemistry. What happens when they're put in water, however, is they kind of separate because they're being put into something that also has charges. And when they separate, they become ions. So sodium has a positive charge, it's missing an electron, and that chlorine has, and chlorine has an extra one, so it's gonna be negative. Remember, electrons are negative. So when they dissociate in water, the really cool thing's gonna happen because this is now a positive ion the water's gonna bond to it because of course opposite charges attract. And I want you to think about like what part of the water molecule do you think would orient itself and attach to this positive sodium? If you're thinking about it and you remember that the oxygen has a negative charge, well then it would make sense for the oxygen negative to bond to the, to the sodium positive. Again, negative oxygen to positive sodium. And what will happen is in reality, not just one molecule, but lots and lots of these water molecules will surround this and make what we would call around this molecule a hydration shell. And what you might notice is it's actually really hard to see that, ooh, that sodium ion inside. So it's kind of disappeared. It's, it's kind of disappeared or dissolved in, in the water. And it only can do that because those, of those charges attracting each other. If I look at the other one, if I look at the chlorine ion now, it's got a negative charge because it has that extra electron, but it's still going to be able to bond to water. So what's going to be different about the way that this one bonds? So if you're thinking that now we've got a negative charge, so we've got to think about what the positive part of the water molecule is, then you're right. And in this case, the hydrogen is going to bond to the chlorine because the hydrogen is positive to the negative part of the chlorine. And the same thing will happen, right, is all of those water molecules as they surround will orient themselves via those um, hydrogen bonds and will create a situation where I now have I now have a hydration shell around the chlorine too. And these, as they're in water, are now bonded to each other, and I can't see the sodium chloride, the salt in the water, it disappears, it dissolves, okay? That's kind of cool, and it can only do that because of that polarity, because I've got the negative charges of the water molecules, and I've got the negative charges of, negative and positive charges of the sodium and the chloride ions. So positive and negative parts of the water molecule, positive and negative ions in that sodium chloride. So let's look at this for real now. So if we were to take a glass of water, let me just grab a glass from up here. So I grab that. And we were to just fill it with some water. And then we were to put some sodium chloride, so just that salt, so this is just salt, right into that water and stir it up. I think you guys all probably know what's gonna happen. So when I do that, when I stir it in, it's gonna be cloudy for a little bit as it's all dissociating. So right now they're just breaking into those individual ions. Right? But what will happen eventually is that I'll end up with my salt disappearing. And so when I look at it, and it'll get clear over time, we might even be able to see it getting clear kind of as we watch, but it'll start to look just like water so that I couldn't even tell the difference between water that has salt in it, that's dissolved the salt, and water that has no salt in it. All those hydration shells protecting, hiding that sodium and that chloride um, within it. Okay, separating those and making them work like that. What's interesting though is if I have something that isn't polar, so for instance, if I have oil, and this is just like vegetable oil that you'd use for cooking, this is not polar, it doesn't have any positive or negative charges. It's a big old string of hydrocarbons and so it doesn't have any unequal distribution of electrons, non-polar molecule. And if I pour water into it, you probably have seen this many times before, this isn't super exciting. What you'll notice is that it's gonna separate. So if I let it settle, I now have water on the bottom and oil, which has a lower density at the top. These two don't mix and even if I stir and stir and stir and stir and stir, when I stop stirring, of course, I'm gonna end up with my two layers. So polar molecules do not dissolve in water, but 
non, uh, sorry, non-polar molecules like oil do not dissolve in water, but polar molecules like sodium chloride, um, lots of examples we'll be looking at in the next little while, they will dissolve in water. And that is all really critical for lots of things, including your own selves, because your blood, which funnily enough is mostly made of water, has to carry the nutrients and waste from your body. And the only way it can do that is by allowing those to dissolve in them so that the liquid can carry, the liquid blood can carry those nutrients to your cells where they're needed. All right, thank you very much.